So let's talk about a topic this week that isn't, it's not salacious, okay? It's not sexy. It's not exciting. Um, I think people's eyes sort of glaze over whenever we talk about this particular topic, but it is very much a topic that affects every Texan all of our lives, and they should know and understand what they're up against. And that is taxes. First of all, I want to make my position clear. Um, taxation is theft. My personal opinion. Uh, the state should not get to, by force, threat, or coercion, lay claim to money that was not earned by them. It was earned by you. Like, that's crazy to, to me personally. I know there are some people who are like, but what about the roads? I, like, okay, that's that's your opinion. Mine is that taxation is freaking theft. All taxation is theft. All right. And philosophical opinions aside, here in Texas, we often boast about being a, a no income tax state, right? We're like, oh, we're Texas. Oh, don't tread on me. We, we hate taxes here in Texas. We don't have an income tax. You should move here. Taxes are low. Mm. Mm. But we boast about it anyway. Okay. Now, usually here in Texas, we're not only comparing ourselves to other states and saying, oh, but what? come look at us. We have more liberty here than anywhere else. We're also looking at the federal level from here in the state of Texas. And we're looking at all of the p proposals um, and we're looking at, say, Kamala Harris's proposals, okay? She keeps saying, I'm not going to tax the middle class. Only the rich are going to pay their fair share because they're not paying their fair share. And we want them to pay their fair share. Now, what is fair? What is fair share? Well, obviously, that's subjective. That's what they do. They use the language. They pick a particular term and they choose it to mean whatever they want it to mean, whether that's fair share or livable wage or anything when it comes to the economy, they just pick these subjective terms that they can then use against you when it's convenient. They're just thoughts, they don't mean anything. There's no magic number. It's just whatever they want it to mean at the time so that they can squeeze you as dry as possible. Imagine yourself, if you're thinking about the federal government. Do I have to? Imagine yourself like a sponge with lots of holes. Sponges are porous, right? So you're a sponge. Sponge? And the federal government is doing dishes. And when they're done, they take you, the sponge, and they, from one direction, ring counterclockwise, and the other direction ring clockwise at the same time just to squeeze every last drop out of you. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no! 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 That's how I envision the federal government when it comes to squeezing me dry and making sure that they have taken every last cent that they possibly legally can. And so you look at Kamala's policies, particularly um, her economic policies, particularly the tax on unrealized gains that she's proposing. And personally, I, I would assume that you guys feel the same way. I look at that and I'm like, that's crazy. Like, that's insane. And so before I go any further, I want to make sure to define unrealized gains without just assuming that every single person in the world knows what it is. I, I like, if you don't do a lot of, I guess, you know, trading stocks um, or anything like that, maybe it's not a, a term that has come across your life. But let me just explain to you what it is, all right? An unrealized gain is, uh, or loss, really, an unrealized gain or an unrealized loss. An unrealized gain is the change in value of a stock, bond, or other asset that you have purchased, but you've not yet sold it, okay? So your stock is going up, it's going down, you might have a really, really good year with a particular asset where you look at it in your portfolio, you're looking at it, you get these, you know, uh, reviews every month, and every single month skyrockets, increases, goes up and up and up. And you're like, holy crap, I am doing so good. I'm doing so well on this particular stock. I'm doing so well in the stock market. I'm up 
X percent. That's awesome. Well, if you haven't sold it yet, you don't actually have that money. It's funny, this is a, a conversation that, um, that I had with my husband often for a while where he'd be like, we gained or we earned this much more, we're up. And I'm like, okay, we're up, but if we don't sell it, it doesn't really matter, right? Like that money's not in our account. So it looks nice on paper. It's not a realized gain yet. You don't have the money, it's not yours until you sell it. And if you don't sell it, you might not sell it until you might screw up and sell it when it's down and walk away with a loss. Well, Kamala, under her plan, you'd be paying taxes on the money you haven't even earned yet. And even if you walked away with a loss, it doesn't matter. You've already paid taxes on the gain on paper, even though it was not a real gain in your life.